Last week on the Adventures of Glitter Girl, Who's This Chick asked how to make her die cuts dazzle. And now for part two. Glitter Girl, can you help Who's This Chick make her silhouette simply sparkle? Of course I can. This week we're going to look at specific shapes cut with an electronic die cutter. So they could be any specific shapes, but the idea that with an electronic die cutter, something like a silhouette or a cricket, um, anything like that will let you cut all sorts of different shapes that you might only want to use once. So it works out a little bit better than, say, buying a steel die or metal die for something that you only want to cut once or twice because that's going to be a big expense if you're only going to use it. So I tend to keep my basic metal dies for the shapes I'm going to use time and time again, like the basics that I used in the last adventure. But in this episode, I'm going to show you the different kinds of cuts that I use if I use uh, my silhouette. So I have all sorts of specific shapes because I can download something or design design something and just cut it once or twice and not have that big outlay of cost of buying a set of dies. So this time I've cut uh, things from the Silhouette store. This Explore die cut um, with a little index card, Celebrate Life pennant, um, two little suitcases with their pieces that adorn them. They have little straps and tags and and then that little star from the um, Explore tag. So those are just some simple shapes and I've cut them out from different pattern papers and some craft cardstock and I'm going to go ahead and start the basic layout and then go back and add detail to these. So I'm going to set them aside just for the moment and put everything together just to form the basic page. I'm using craft cardstock for the background and then a sheet that's almost 12 by 12. I've just cut this down so it has a quarter inch border on each side with rounded edges and then I've added some brown ink to the edge. This is from the October Afternoon Midway collection. So this yellow and cream print on one side and the ticket design on the other. So just going to go ahead and add this to the craft cardstock. And then I'll start to build everything else on top of that. I have two 4x6 photos today, but I want to use a design that I normally use with three 4x6 photos because I have quite a bit of journaling. And I know that these two particular photos are going to seem a little strange. One is a window and one is somebody doing laundry in a sink. But there's a real story behind that and that's exactly why I want to have plenty of room for journaling because it's a story I really want to be part of my trip album. This is a design I normally do with three 4x6 photos because I'd add the third one here all in a line, but in this case I'm going to use a 4x6 journaling card and it's cut from a sheet of pattern paper. It's this uh, pa pattern paper from the Ready, Set, Go Amy Tangerine Collection by American Crafts. It's called True Story and I've used quite a bit of it now, but this side, the A side, is all different pieces that you can cut apart and use as die cuts, journaling cards, all sorts of little things like that. And then the back is a blue that matches the collection. It's not a complete solid, it has a bit of texture like a watercolor paper. So and that's what I'm going to use for the journaling card here, just like I would use three photos in the design. So you could use the same design with three photos or with one photo and more journaling cards and just really easy to use four by six photos together or four by six blocks together. So my big a uh, problem sometimes with cards like this is that I get really tempted to add more stuff on top, more embellishment, and then I lose the space that I've allocated to journaling. So I'm going to go ahead and do my writing now before I do anything else on the page so that I'm not tempted to cover up too much of that empty space um, and then limit what I have for writing. So with this row across the middle of my photos and my journaling card, I want to add a little bit to the top and the bottom before I start adding the embellishment and the title over that. I've used the notebook paper punch with the map paper from Studio Calico's Abroad collection and I'll just trim off so they have just a little bit of this to use as a border at the top of this row and inking the map and the journaling card with brown ink just like the edge of the yellow. And then I'm also going to layer some washi tape over the top of this and add some washi tape to the bottom of that 
row of photos as well. So map at the top and then I've chosen these two washi tapes, one with a brown wood grain and this is a slightly different one than we, what we have in the shop at the moment and um, but I don't have the new one yet and I still have some of the old so we do have wood grain washi tape that's brown in the store it's just slightly different than this one and um, this one from October afternoon which has days of the week so add one at the top and one at the bottom. I think for the contrast, I'll use the brown at the top. Normally go for the darker color at the bottom of the page, but this time, because there's already blue and the aqua, they're a little too close for my liking. So just line that up with the top. Dry again because I went a little bit wonky. There we go. And then the round or the aqua days of the week washi tape at the bottom of the row. Same thing. And then I can just tuck the excess over the edge. I find that little bit just makes it a little bit easier than cutting it and um, flush to the edge because then it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't catch when you put it in the page protector. It's not going to slightly come up at the edge or anything like that. So that's just my preference to wrap it around to the end. And now I'm going to start with my die cuts. Now I have this larger card that's going to be kind of the biggest element and then all the smaller pieces on top. So I have the little pennant and the suitcase. Now with a design like this that has some pieces but not a million pieces, so it has um, the, the suitcase, the little tag, and the straps, I tend to go ahead and cut the whole design twice because I'll just cut it from two different pattern papers. So I cut it once from the brown polka dot and then another time from this blue stripe that's from um, American Crafts Shoreline in the 6x6. And so now I have two of those suitcase sets ready to go. And it might be that I use both of them on the same page because I could put one up here in the corner. Or it might be that I end up using them on different pages. But I just find if I need to cut the, the little um, strips from a second pattern, I might as well go ahead and cut the whole set twice. And then I can build the two little suitcases and either use them on separate pages or the same one. So I'll put this one aside for a moment until I come back to the top of the page. And I want to work on this set to start with. Now, before I build any of this, one thing that adds a lot of depth to the plain die cut straight away is to add some ink. So I'll start with adding brown ink to the edges of the larger card. And even if I just do this easy part, the box, when I put it down on top you can automatically see the difference where the lettering, where it's not inked, is not nearly as obvious an edge as what you get from the box. So go ahead and ink the edges of the lettering as well to bring in that definition. And I tend to just use the applicator and go around the, the top and the edges so you can already start to see where it's darker there. And then I'll come back in and this does take a little bit more time and just bend the pieces slightly so that I can get the applicator into all those edges. So that bit does take a little more patience, um, but it makes it much easier to read in the end and adds a lot more depth to the die cut. After I've inked that piece, now I have more definition in the edges, but I still have this little line across the middle that doesn't give me a lot of uh, definition. So one way to spice that up a little bit is to use those holes as stitching holes and um, sew through them. So to stitch this, I'm just using a really large needle because I don't need to make any holes in the paper, they're already there. And it has on each side and the stitching holes go over the edge. So I've just started one hole in and then secured my uh, thread on the back with some washi tape and then immediately go around to that first edge to loop around. And that one I will do, I end up doing twice and then I just jump ahead. 
and you can decide how many of them you want to stitch if you want to go over every single one if you want to do more than one color just try adding a little bit of stitching to the gaps that are already there and that's just a really easy way to add a bit more dimension I'm going to build a little area of embellishment with these pieces together plus some other pieces that are um, printed die cuts but I've added the brown ink to both the Explore box and the brown suitcase. The one color that it doesn't work very well for me to add brown to is light blue. I almost always, if I add brown ink to light blue, I end up regretting it. I do it all the time and then when I look at it at the end, I wish I'd added another color. So this time I'm using um, blue Distress Ink in Broken China and exactly the same technique, I'm just adding blue around the edges instead of brown. So same same products, same technique. And it the brown works well with almost every color, but there's just something about brown on light blue that just doesn't work as well for me. It picks up a funny little hue. Now, on a vintage paper like that map print at the top, the brown works fine. So it's the cleaner light blues and aqua shades that don't work quite as well. So I want to add that definition a little bit of shading. So I'm just doing it with blue instead of the brown. And then I'll show you the pieces that I want to add in. I have some Amy Tangerine pieces. So this is another one cut from that same sheet as the journaling card, the little file folder with the everyday and the camera. Now although these are all different pieces, the Celebrate Life, the Everyday, and the Explore, they all use a similar style of font that's quite blocky and stencil-like, so I think um, they'll work well together. And then I also pulled out some this little arrow die cut that has all the colors from the Ready Set Go collection in it. And these two pieces from Ormulu, which come in this um this pack called Bungalow Flappers. And by flappers, they're all pieces that have the ability to to fold. So there's a pre-scored line, but you can use them flat as they are, or you can score them. Easiest thing for me to do at this point is to go ahead and adhere the largest element so that then I can add bits and pieces on top of it. And because I want those letters to be secure, I'm just putting a little bit of adhesive on each of those. And I want to make sure I keep the craft on the yellow and not cover up my writing. So that should give me a good spot for the placement. And then I can start to build these different pieces together and I'm thinking something along the lines of this pennant can be tucked behind the suitcase but also I want to include this one and this may be actually best to go flush with the bottom of the page I think so so I'll go ahead and add ink to this box and adhere it all the way down to the bottom of the layout And then with the pennant, I can use some foam squares and then also a little bit of flat adhesive just on that edge that's going to be hidden behind the suitcase so that everything will sit properly on the page. And so since I took this one to the edge of the page, I want to take another element to the edge of the page. So I'll do that with this piece here. And with these cutout pieces, quite often works really well to use pop dots with them because the shadow makes it a little bit easier to read the, um, the cutouts even in a small letter. Then I want to add my suitcase into this mix. And it's easiest to go ahead and put the smaller pieces on that. So that's all just with flat adhesive. Now there are all sorts of silhouette patterns that will let you create really complex designs with dozens of pieces and then there are very simple ones like this where you just have a few and I do quite like the really simple designs because they go together so quickly but if you have a little more time and you're really 
patient with your cutter and, and the gluing it all back together. I really suggest giving one of those more complex um, outlines a try because they will add lots of depth and a really unique look to your page if you're looking for a way to um, to make your die cuts look more than just an outline. And adding ink to all of the edges will make it um, come together really, really easily and, and in a really lovely way. But I'm going to stick with really simple shapes, so there we go. It will work either way. So now I'm looking for ways that I can bring in a bit more of the color from the rest of the page. So I have those arrows and I, what I don't want to do is make that look like this is all one piece because it cle quite clearly isn't. So maybe the best bet is to yeah, go underneath the suitcase and flat on the page. And I've already angled a few pieces here so as long as my angles are quite small then I don't have to worry about it looking like I wanted it to be really, really straight and then I missed the boat on that. And so I want to add something here because I now have this gap, um, but I think for the moment I'll leave that and because I think this would be a really good element for that. I'm just going to cut it down to this box that says U and I'll add the ink, but if I add this now in the gap, I just have kind of yellow on yellow and it would be nicer if I had another element behind there to back that layer. So other elements I had pulled out included some scraps of little wood grain and chevron papers. I think I like the darker one better. So just going to cut a little piece and tuck it behind there. Add some ink to all those edges. If I can tuck it behind all of these layers. I'll replace that one. Now if I add this yellow box here, I don't have the yellow on yellow. I, I have all contrast there. That'll work. Now it's quite a lot going on in that corner. It'd be really good to balance something up here in the top corner. So I have that little home piece that I pulled out. Go ahead and add ink to that while I'm deciding what else to include. It would be good to be able to duplicate some things so I could go ahead and add a bit more of that chevron paper that I just used. And then I'll try that second suitcase and see if it's a good match for the size and the placement here. In fact, that will work really well with the home piece on top and then I'll have space to add some small letter stickers to finish that phrase to say not at home. So this is blue, so I'm going to add blue ink instead of brown. And at the bottom I used the suitcase and on foam squares so it's up off the page. This time I'm going to put it flat because I'm going to add the home on pop dots over the top, but I'd also like to add a little bit of dimension. So in addition to the little straps that are flat on the suitcase, I'm going to find some baker's twine in a good color for the rest of the page and either loop it around the handle of the suitcase or the straps of the suitcase, whichever looks better. So I'll have a look and see. That way I don't need quite as much depth as when I use the foam squares. So I'll still be able to add another layer on top, but it'll give it a, something a little bit different. So I think I'll end up adding some baker's twine to each of the suitcases. And on this one I'll add it around where the straps are and then at the bottom I'll tie it around the handle. 
So I'm just going to use that same washi tape to secure the thread on the back. And then just loop it around and just have a look to see um, with different combinations if you want to loop it once, twice, whatever, and uh, have a look at how it works. I think in this case it's going to work best. It's just one single loop. So the little twine around the suitcase and then this piece on foam squares. So that's popped up off the page. And then I'll start looking at these label stickers. And I was surprised that I pulled out anything that seemed to have wording that could work for travel and adventure. And they weren't all specifically travel themed. This one is from Indie Chic, which has a travel collection within that. Like Indie Chic has several different um, kind of mini collections, and one of them has a real travel vibe to it. And this one has wording that says Great Adventure. But this one from Jelly Bean Soup is actually a sports themed, but I think these are really nice words, some of them just for everyday stuff. I particularly like this one that says, um, uh, be amazingly awesome today, things like that. Make it happen could be used for anything, doesn't have to be sport. Um, so that one's quite versatile. And then this one is kind of an everyday life type uh, set. It's called Journaling 2. And it has all sorts of things that you could use for all different themes. And particularly like this worth every minute kind of thing to go with the journaling. And it was also a good color to throw in. So see where I could add some of those pieces. I start with that orange. I think what might work well is if I tuck it underneath the brown twine so that that twine goes between the words. So it's still legible. And then I'll pick one to go at the bottom of the page so that um, so that there's kind of that matching element. So there we go. Now I have those two little bits of orange and there's orange in this grouping so I'm quite happy with that as a little triangle of color even though there's not a lot of orange in the layout. And I have basically kind of a title. Um, I want to add some small letter stickers up here. My journaling's intact. I need to add the date. And then I'm um, just looking at some little finishing touches to really bring those die cuts to life. For lettering, I used two sticker sheets in the small size. The Teal and Cream Mini Market letters and then the Craft Alpha Beans from Jelly Bean Soup. And the mini markets are from October afternoon. And I tried to repeat both at the top and the bottom in two ways. One, just using the same alphabet for one letter at the top, and one, sorry, one word at the top and one word at the bottom. But also in the placement. So here, the craft letters are all in the uppercase and they're all really evenly spaced with a baseline. They're not um, wonky or higgledy piggledy. But then the teal letters are. They're, they're not in a line. They're all jumbled up. So when I used them at the bottom, I did the same thing. So um, these are all uppercase and all nicely stacked on that line and these bounce around a bit more. So something just a little different. And then today for one last little touch, I'm going to add um, a few little spots of glitter. And I'm just going to do that with glossy accents or any liquid adhesive and I'm just drawing little dots in triangles. So I have three here and three here and then I'll do three in this bottom cluster too. I'm looking at edges of things as places to put those perhaps. Not necessarily, these are a bit more out in the open. And I also want to add some twine to that little suitcase handle. So while that is getting a bit tacky. The glue, I will just tie that on here. And then I'll sprinkle some glitter over the glue and shake off the extra and have just a little bit of sparkle. Now obviously if you prefer you can use um, glitter glue, so stickles or something else that comes as glitter and glue all in one. But if you have loose glitter, 
then you can use any liquid glue to put your dots down on the page and then um, add the sparkle after the glue is there. Or if you want something a little bit more random but you do want the intense sparkle of loose glitter rather than something like a glimmer mist, you can also use um, glue and a, a thinner glue than glossy accents perhaps and spray it on with a, with a paintbrush just like you would paint um, with a dry brush flicking it onto the page. But if you've already done all your photos and everything you'll need to be brave and make sure that you cover up things that you don't want the glue to get on. So that will give you a bit more random look um, than drawing the little triangle dots. But just different options for different things and then I'm going to use a little bit of turquoise glitter covering up with those little dots and then I'll shake off all the extra. Here's my finished page for this week and your challenge is to grab your digital die cutter or electronic cutter of some sort if you have one and go for mixing those pieces with the other elements that you've create that you already have in your stash that were pre-made things like die cuts, pattern paper, and stickers, all sorts of things like that and see if you can work with the, the cuts you've made along with those pieces that you'd already purchased. If you don't have a digital die cutter, you can still join us this week. Just try to cut something that's a bit more specific than last week. So last week we looked at things that like circles, very basic shapes, and see if you can cut something just a little bit more specific to your page this week. And it might be easiest to print out a design online and then just cut round using that as a stencil with your scissors. And anything like a suitcase, you could certainly cut by hand. So Thank you so much for watching this week, and I hope to see your pages in the gallery. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.